good morning guys welcome back to a new video i have this new thing where i do my makeup on the ground with the mirror in front of me and i always just put my makeup right here now i used to do it in my little bathroom right there but you just don't have light and i literally cannot see anything so this here is much easier i want to get some new like makeup and stuff i feel like i've been using kind of the same products over over and over i by the way i did a little discovery and i don't know why i didn't know this either i got this like tarte lights eyelashes uh, mascara and instead of just putting it up like this i also did it the other way and got the top lashes and it just made such a huge difference which was insane so i don't know if i can show it here I feel from down below you get them close to the root and then from on top I feel my lips are very pinkish by itself which is really nice but I want to try to find like a nice nude kind of lip liner and lip gloss because the one I've been using now was this one uh, Laura Mercier I don't know if this is gonna be you see even this is a little pinkish yeah sometimes it looks like I'm actually wearing like lipstick and then we look so fresh oh yeah if you guys are looking for a highlighter i am obsessed with this one from charlotte tilbury Wait, this is the contour one this one and you see it has this kind of like golden look it just has this like super beautiful like natural um kind of glimpse and it's not like gold and it's also not like very pinkish or like white it just has this like really nice combination i am ready for the day so today i wanted to share a video on kind of stress and like anxiety and i am going to have jason help me with this because he has helped me a lot through everything and kind of like guided me and like coached me and stuff. So we're going to make our morning coffee, matcha. And then we're just going to have a little chat. What one do you want? Uh, Hot or iced? Hot. Hot. I don't like iced matcha. No. I'm going to make an iced one because I'm pretty warm. He's in hers. I have a little matcha latte. You always get the perfect temperature with that uh, huh? kettle. I know, the kettle. Kettle is from uh, this brand Fellow. A lot of you guys asked me. Mm. Let's say over the last year I have experienced stress. <laughs> A lot of it. Uh, a lot of it. This can obviously be caused by so many different reasons and this is very different for every type of person. And Jason has really like helped me kind of guide through that. I think for me, kind of pre-pandemic, I couldn't really deal with instant change whenever I had like things planned and this was mostly regarding kind of like my schedule. Modeling jobs were always booked so last minute that sometimes I had everything planned out for the week and then they were like you have to go to Miami tomorrow and I was like ah, and I would just get so flustered and I just had this constant feeling of feeling overwhelmed and this had to do with a couple of reasons I think. I didn't say no. I didn't say no to if people i didn't say no to projects i just like jumped into everything and at one point like you can not take on everything you can't do everything so kind of being selective there i had a very hard time verbalizing that and actually meaning it and meaning it yeah, yeah. i would barely write things down and my calendar I think Google Calendar. All, all lived in her head. <laughs> it was right here. I was like, oh yeah, my dentist on Tuesday. Yeah, I remember that. And I would remember it. But then I also had a meeting until two and another thing. And this. I literally wouldn't even use my Google Calendar. So you can imagine kind of that would become pretty messy. 
And the problem was too, because I was being chaotic, it kind of brought the chaos also around for other people. Yeah, but you know, it's amazing because your intention was to actually decrease that for other people by not including them in the plans. Yeah, I was like not telling Max or Jason or other people what I was up to and that would just cause like way more products. Sometimes when I could feel stress like coming, I would get this kind of like pressure on my chest sometimes. I would also feel very tired in the evening, like really like exhausted and I would be like triggered very fast, like emotional and stuff. What it took you to finally get to the point where you're ready to like open up and talk about it was like a month of that. Like when you would finally be like, okay, I'm ready to like deal with this. It took like a month. I almost like didn't want to admit that it was there. I was like, I don't know anxiety. I don't, I don't deal with that. That's kind of what I was like telling myself because mm -hmm. I had never experienced this. And I was like, I heard about panic attacks. I've never felt it. And right. I felt, I was like kind of like pushing that away. So it really what happened was like eventually after months and months of doing this, you'd have a breakdown. Not like a crazy emotional breakdown, but a breakdown where you can tell like you were you were ready to try to move past this. That's where I would reach out to Jason, which is not good, but that's what was happening. <laughs> yeah. So Jason actually told me to he was like, okay, whenever you like get into this moment of you know feeling panic or overwhelming or stress, try to find what was your trigger, what happened literally, maybe even like. 10 minutes before that or an hour or something and just try to find that trigger what makes you feel like that so not a couple of breakdowns in but a couple of situations in i kind of noticed i was like hey it's really my change of schedule chaos in my schedule disorganization in my schedule what every time in, in all different ways would kind of like trigger this yeah yeah Big time. And before before you came on top of the trigger, the the things that were being said were like, oh, just take a break. Oh, yeah. just kind of like give yourself some space to figure it out. And a lot of times the space would cause more anxiety because you really weren't looking for space. You were looking to figure out how to tackle everything that you were doing at one time and just needing to find a new way of how to organize it all so that it worked in the way that you saw it working in your mind. Yeah, it, it's true. It, in my head, I was like, I need a break for this weekend or I need a vacation. But when I would come back, it would just happen straight because there was no actually actual change in kind of my baby. So this, I think, where we kind of figure out, I was like, okay, it's really time management, what is causing this stress. And I remember, so one weekend we uh, we put yoga mats on the ground right there and I think we spent four hours on the ground <laughs> looking for planners, for right apps, for kind of finding the right tools for me to actually plan my time and to stick to it. All the time planners that I like or all the things I'm suggesting to you, even though like gave you ideas to find what you liked, you didn't like any of the ones that I used, which I thought was so funny because, you know. They were so big. We were, like, we're all operating out of our own experience and I'm like, oh, this is totally perfect if she uses this one. And then you'd go to a different calendar. You're like, no, I like the list. And this is also a tip for you. Like you have to find something what works for you. And I think we spent like almost a day just organizing everything, like calendars, things like that. And then kind of build a system and what I had to like stick to yeah which is that's the that's the key is like now that you have the system there you know it it's really nice on that first day and it's really like the second third fourth and fifth day of like actually sticking to it that you yeah. start to like actually feel your body relax and let go of the stress i actually wanted to share a couple ones which i used obviously i started using this google calendar on my phone which syncs with all my email invitations i also really loved the uh, task because i often had these little tasks in my head like hey doing the groceries or hey grabbing this for my video or hey dropping off clothing picking up this like little task and i was like i need a place to put it and i would write it down often on random pieces of paper but then obviously when i was in a store and i didn't i didn't bring it so putting that in my phone it was just always with me and whenever I, something popped up in my head, I can put this immediately in. 
And then I had a paper planner calendar where I just more day by day, just kind of do the to-do list for today. I like to put it in my phone for security and I just like to write it down because I feel when I write it down, I actually like... Get it in there. It, 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 that, that's your system. Exactly. And also I think uh, saying no was a really big thing. Yeah. It was very, very liberating, I think, once you, once you got the hang of it. Yeah, I think so too. Stress is really, if you think about it, some, something that you have going on that you want to happen for yourself that you either can't get right now or that someone else is standing in your way of getting. And it always has to do with time. Any situation where you're early or you have a lot of time, not stressed at all. If you think you have a year to do a project, no stress. You have one day before it's due, unbelievable stress. You're going to the airport, you have free time, you get there an hour early, no stress. You have five minutes to catch your plane, the entire ride there, you're thinking in your head, I'm gonna miss this, I'm gonna miss this, I'm gonna miss this, and because it's, there's a time, there's a factor of time involved. And so recognizing that there's time involved and that it has to do with either something you want or something other people are stopping from you from getting what you want, that can help you start to figure out like what's, what's at the root of this, what's the source that's going on. And you'll realize that saying no, which is what you did, was your way of figuring out how to give yourself more time, to give yourself the life that you wanted to live, and to stop doing things for other people that they wanted that was preventing you from being where you wanted. Yeah. In a sense. You know, it's not always people just standing in your way from what you want, but it's it's someone else's idea of what they need and us fulfilling that. And then that the power of saying no is that you recognize that it's really not such a bad thing you need that to protect your boundaries, to protect your space. And then once you can use that as a resource in your life, now it's much easier to say yes to things that you really want to do. Recognizing that saying no, keeping your boundaries is a, is a big part of respecting yourself and knowing what you want and how to be. Um, and also recognizing that whenever you're stressed, time is involved. Now, for people that let's say you are super organized and you're the complete opposite side from where Sana's talking about. So like Sana was, you know, basically organizing her entire world in her own mind and trying to keep track of everything with changes that she couldn't control coming from the outside. Yeah. I was like preventing her from doing what she wanted to do and, and it was getting her really, really stressed. Now, if you're on the opposite side and you have everything calendared and you have everything in, in line and this is easy for you and it's natural, you're probably getting stressed from chaos. You're probably getting stressed from, you know, relaxing, not having to schedule things and recognizing that sometimes over controlling and over scheduling and making sure everything is actually in place yeah. then prevents you from connecting with others. It prevents you from being able to go with the flow when things go wrong, things like that. And those will start to get you stressed. And so you could be experiencing stress completely different but all coming back to that same root, that same source. Yeah, I really, I really love that. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, one day when you feel no, like actually, now you're... No, actually, I'm gonna be honest, I think so far, 2021, it's been my biggest growth, like biggest growth is actually saying no, and I'm really like consciously now when things pop up, I'm like, am I really gonna do this? And I'm like, no, not possible. And it just, it, it feels so good. It feels so good to say no. <laughs> and not to feel bad about it there. because that's yeah. a different thing and i think also what you said about like the time planning sometimes when i was like really busy or whatever and i had so much on my mind i found it really hard to take time for myself because whenever i would do that my head would still be in another world and still thinking about all those other things and this is what i've learned as well now to actually plan out free time and this sounds really weird but I've mentioned this before, also plan out your workouts, maybe if you don't have time, plan out your meals. But planning out your free time really, or for me, had really created the space that when that time was there, I could really let go of everything because it was planned like that. I always had a little bit of resistance to that because like, 
I don't want to have the life where I plan out my free time and stuff. And after I start doing it, I was actually like, it gives me so much more rest. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird because it, it always feels backwards in our bodies. But, you know, if you are the person that is controlling yourself, and you're the one planning the free time and you're the one planning what's going on, then you actually have the most yeah. amount of freedom. Now you're completely open to the experiences you have. Whereas yeah. before that, it would be like, well, I don't want to plan my free time. And so other people are dictating when my free time is. And then you feel controlled and then yeah, the time that, that's, never feels that's free. How it, that's how it felt. And I was yeah. like, no, I'm like, I'm a Pisces. I'm like, go with the flow. <laughs> if someone asks me, hey, you want to do this? I'm going to be like, sure. And I was like, it's just not working with the goals I want to do. So that's also a little bit of a different thing. Yeah. I think a lot of times we, we recognize in ourselves the effect, which is like stress is an effect. It's not the cause, right? Yeah. So like something happens and that causes us to then feel stressed. And then we notice the stress, we label it, but sometimes we can't, we don't even recognize we're in it. And so you had a bunch of different ways where you like really knew if you were stressed. And you talked a little about it before, which was like getting really anxious or overwhelmed. Yeah. You're like blowing up over little things. It could have been pain in your body. I think you, you had pains in, shoulder, in your yeah. shoulder. Um, sometimes it would literally feel there's a little person hanging on this left shoulder, just hanging there. Just that was the stress <laughs> pain, which come up yeah it's really weird which is which is a really really important thing to become aware of and to notice because once you figure out what's at the root of the stress instead of just trying to probably do what Sana did originally which was like stretch out her shoulder or feel you know try to do something with her body to change it it's like oh this is a sign that I'm stressed so I'm probably not organized right now it becomes a trigger for okay, like now I have to go and organize some more. I obviously haven't figured out all the pieces to this yet. Yeah. And it becomes easier and easier to then move out of stress when you feel it. And the most important thing about that is that we all deal with stress every single day as we're trying to get things done and time is impending on us. And you don't want to just not have stress because stress is what you need to grow. Yeah. You always need some form of stress. What you really want to do is increase the amount of stress that you can handle so that the same amount of stress that's affecting you now doesn't feel like stress tomorrow. Yeah. And this way you have the tools in which to grow. I really love that. And also to come back to that, like you always have stress because even like when you do a workout, your body, how your body reacts to it is like, oh, there's like stress going on and it needs a recovery. So something very simple that actually has helped me do is was to take more time for myself in taking bath. I would never take time to take a bath and relax and like I would take time to actually stretch out my complete body, not just my shoulder when it was painful, but actually start my morning with it and to loosen up my body because when I would feel my body was looser, I was like, oh, I'm like, you know, I'm also a little looser during the day myself. <laughs> so these kind of like small little things have also um, helped me a lot or to go outside and choose to be in the sun or just go for a walk. Those like small things just kind of give my body like relaxation and also automatically my mind. Yeah. Really what you want to do is you want to change your state. You want to change the state you're in because you are thinking about something and you're repeating that thought in your head and your body's repeating the same position that it's in and then you're perpetuating mm -hmm. what's going on. And so you want to try and change your state. If you can recognize it, you want to do something different. You want to take a bath, which then relaxes your body. Yeah. You want to jump up and down. You want to put on different music that changes the way that you're moving. If you can change your state, yeah. then you can change your thoughts. And that's one way to deal with it. You can also do breathing exercises, which you might not feel like doing in the moment. I was just listening to Andrew Huberman, who is a neuroscientist from Stanford, uh, who has done some research. And instead of what's commonly taught, which is one big breath in and one big breath out, that doesn't necessarily relax your nervous system. Uh, he was actually recommending that you actually do two breaths in followed by a quick breath out. And that's what can reset your nervous system. So it'd be something like, 
I mean, honestly, just even the three breads we do before dinner. Otherwise, you sit down and you immediately start <laughs> eating, you know, it's like kind of depressed, close the day, and you're like, oh, let's start dinner. And I think all these small little things, and even what we do now, we take a couple deep breaths while we're making our morning matcha, and then start our day. I feel if you incorporate it in like something what is already really in your routine, it's so much easier to actually stick to it. A hundred percent. Yeah. And you know, it's it's a small thing to do, but it, it really pays off in the long run. Yeah. That's the short term, and the long term would be more in line of stress prevention. Um, and I think this is the key for long-term success. It, it really comes down to the mindsets and the emotions and really taking responsibility for how you get into a stress state. And so if you really think about it, you know, everything starts off with a thought you have in your mind, right? And those thoughts are what create your emotions and those emotions create your behaviors and those behaviors create your outcomes. Those outcomes then create new thoughts. And so that's what the cycle is. It's like if you're thinking about the fact that the plane is going to take off without you, well, now you feel inside your body this emotions of like, I'm not going to make it. What are we going to do? I paid all this money for that flight. Like, what am I going to do? And you start thinking about all the things that you have to do. And that then goes into your behavior. And now you're trying to rush people. Or you're feeling it in your body. And then the outcome is like you get there and let's say you do miss the plane. Well, now you have more thoughts about how could I do this? And like, I'm terrible. I left too late. Like, this is ridiculous. Or it was the driver's fault. And, then, and yeah. then you keep cycling around and just recognizing for the long term that those are thoughts that you are creating in your mind, taking responsibility for those thoughts and recognizing that it is a vicious cycle that gets you to all the places. Well, now you can start to step back and be like, okay, I understand my trigger. I understand the root of what puts me into that state the next time when I feel like oh no I'm gonna miss the flight be like you know what I'm gonna get there at the exact same time I'm gonna get there yeah. I'm gonna relax my body and then the emotion that's created is I can't control this it's out of my control so I'm just gonna be calm about it your behavior is more normalized and then when you get there you can deal with it and that creates a more positive cycle I hope this kind of like helped a little bit for you guys as well Jason and I are both on intro which um, do you want to explain? Yeah, so Intro is an app that allows you to contact people in different fields. Uh, Sana and I are in the wellness field. They're anywhere from 15 minutes to hour long phone calls. You can talk about anything that you want to, any problems that you might be going through, um, any resources that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, it's just a really cool way to interact with people and, and get more knowledge in a more face-to-face -face setting. I think this is just such a great way where we can all like connect and uh, yeah, ask any questions. And of course, if you have any other questions, you can also pop them in the comments down below. I'm very curious. I hope to speak to you guys soon. Yeah, well, bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe.